possibly he didn't at the time because it came out right when he started. So what do you think about that, uh, Hendo? Listen, I thought that I loved it. You know, I felt it was a strategic move. And he was like, oh, your boy about to come on. Let me let him get about five words in. And he just threw that tweet out there. Now, I know that it, it, it caused a lot of confusion amongst the fly. Now, you got two sides battling. But, hey, he had to put his truth out there. Like, look, I, you, you, I'm tired of y'all saying Lamar, pick a side. Either accept the money or get out of here. And he's letting everybody know. I asked for a trade on March the 2nd. Mm-hmm. It's been 25 days. There has been no action. Now, I was told by your general manager and head coach that when players ask for trades and they don't want to be here, we obli- you know, we oblige and we help them to move on. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure that by now they could have facilita- facilitated a trade to get Lamar somewhere else. But Harbaugh's in there shucking and jiving, talking about, oh, no, love Lamar. We hang out. You know, he babysits some kids, and he's going to be here forever. We're building an offense around him. Like, come on, bro. But I just, I just love the fact that Lamar is finally, I think, standing up for himself and putting out his version of what's going on. Mm-hmm. Chris? Yeah, so th- that part, I liked it. Um, I'm not a big John Harbaugh guy. Um, I think just the way he handles – injury situations, not even just Lamar, but like the Ronnie Stanley situation where he was kind of putting heat on Ronnie to play. Like, I, I don't like that kind of stuff. Like, mm-hmm. you're supposed to have your players back. You know, if if, if they're hurt or if they're injured, not even hurt, if they're injured, don't put them out on blast like that. Right. So to kind of see him squirm in his seat with all those reporters around him, that was satisfying to see. But the news itself, it was a little, it was hurtful. I'm not going <laughs> to lie, it was hurtful. Um because you know I'm I'm a Ravens fan, so of course I want him to stay here. But at right. the same time, this is business, right? You know, so I understand where Lamar's coming from because it's like you know at the end of the day he feels like he's worth a certain number. Mm-hmm. I I can't tell him he's not right. You know, if the, if one team doesn't agree with him, then that's their prerogative. But it's on him to try to get to that next situation with a team that does agree with him or will give him what he's happy with. It only takes one to believe him. Mm-hmm. It only takes one. Jose? Uh, I love it, man. Um, look, I mean, like Chris said, like as a Ravens fan, you know, no, I, I, I prefer Lamar stay here. But, you know, I love the fact that, you know, Lamar isn't just taking the BS lane down. He's not letting them uh, control the narrative. And, um. It's not, you know. Listen, I, I think this is a. Uh, I think they're they're trying to play tre- uh play chess with mm-hmm. the media. You know, um, they're leaking now. They're obviously Ravens are obviously leaking out stuff at this point. I, you know, it's, that's obvious. Mm-hmm. You know, you got you got Ian Rappaport, uh, who didn't know anything about the trade this this trade request the whole time, and then after Lamar announces that he requested a trade, he comes out and says, "Oh well, they were they were negotiating up until last week." You you know, despite the trade request, yeah, that's because you got on the phone with your boys and they told you, right? right. <laughs> um, you know, so Lamar is kind of exposing those things, and I think it's 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 a great move after you know they they you know quote unquote let him te- test free agency after you know a lot of us believe that there might be some collusion going on there. That's a great way to say, hey, well, you know what? Actually, I don't even want to deal with you guys, right? I'm letting everybody know like the, the Ravens aren't even going to be an option, so that's fine. So let's see how that how that affects these other owners and and how they approach Lamar because it's it's one thing if you're saying. Hey, okay, we're uh, we're going to uh, not really go after Lamar. We're going to give you a chance to sign your guy, but now he's saying he didn't want to be with you. Well, I mean, hey, we waited long enough. You had your shot, you know. Now, now we're going to go and, and make a play for him. I, I, I think things are going to start. I always thought things were going to going to uh, start to, to to kick up after the draft, but this just adds an uh, you know another wrinkle into it. So, I you know, good for him. Exactly. B. You know, I loved it. I thought it was great. Uh, not only just him asking for the the, the trade uh, <laughs> right when Harbaugh was you know starting his <laughs> press conference, uh, but just him asking for the trade in general. Uh, you know, I, I told Jose from the very first season that he was in Baltimore, they're doing him like Cam, like Carolina did Cam Newton, and I'm glad that he's he's standing up for himself. Um, you know, the, after the team's been putting out all the this stuff about him, and you know. Let it, letting people just kind of talk about how, how he's holding the team hostage and kind of letting it be out there that, oh, well, Lamar's the reason we're not going after anybody in free agency. Well, look, man, you had five years 
of Lamar on the team. You didn't you didn't do anything.